Okay, so let's just look at a couple examples. The first thing I want to talk about is LeoStream and scale computing. And in particular, they provide their HC3 virtualization platform. You know, that's a hyper-converged infrastructure. And we partnered with Scale Computing back in October to provide native API integration with their platform. And what that has really done is made VDI accessible for everybody. You know, I've well, been talking here about how LeoStream has been an enterprise play. Well, with our integration with Scale Computing, now it doesn't matter if your IT staff is just one or two people. You can roll in Scale and then you can install LeoStream and within hours, you can be up and running and have a full-blown BDI solution for your users to start using. And I know our sounds kind of optimistic, but we will soon have a third-party source that did an evaluation for us and, and we'll confirm that for you. So what the API integration gives us really is it's simplified provisioning for their environment. As I mentioned, we had this, we had the rules already in place in LeoStream. All we needed to do was hook into the scale computing API. And now all of this is possible within scale computing. Now this is my kind of high level diagram. And what I'm talking about here is a hybrid architecture. So, the scale VDI is very, very simple. You have your hosting platform, you have your connection management from LeoStream, you're off and running. A lot of times what we see in those environments is RDP is the protocol. But now and what we're noticing with our enterprise customers is, well, they started on-prem, they have on-prem hosted machines. Now they wanna actually expand it out and start looking at a hybrid environment. And that's kind of what I'm mocking up here. And this is what I'm gonna show you in the demo. The idea here at least is I have the connection broker running on-prem, happens to be on my scale HC3 platform. And I also have my desktops. That's what you see at the lower left. Now this, the, the circle at the top right with the check mark in it, that's supposed to indicate my authentication server. So on-prem, we also have an Active Directory authentication server. That's what's obviously authenticating the users. So users who log in from my LeoStream Connect who are on-prem, actually sitting in my data center, or not in my data center, in my office, they're going to connect to a virtual machine that's hosted on HC3. Now for users coming externally from a web browser, what they're going to do is they're actually going to be offered a machine that's up in AWS. And so that's why I have the gateway installed up in AWS. It's acting as the portal from the web browser to the desktop and it will launch, the connection will actually launch using HTML5. Now, the one last piece that I have, and the, the thing that I tell people is really the trickiest part whenever you build any kind of hybrid environment is the networking. The LeoStream agents need to be able to communicate with the connection broker in order for the connection broker to get those events. And so in order to do that, I built an AWS a VPN before my, between my private network and my on-prem system so that the agents out there on those AWS instances can come in and talk to my connection broker. So that's what I'm going to kind of show you in the broker itself. So let me switch over here. So here you see I have an AWS, just this very simple environment here, but I have my one desktop and I have my LeoStream gateway running in there. Very simple gateway to install as well. Runs on CentOS or RHEL, single command. And then I have, here's my scale computing environment where I already have two machines spun up and then what I also have down here is my Windows 10 master desktop. So that's kind of what I did to prime the pipe in my scale environment is I just created that one Windows master and now LeoStream is going to automate the provisioning from there on in. So what you see here then is the connection broker. As I mentioned, all of the configuration is done through this web interface. Now this web interface is completely customizable. So if you wanna change the logos, change the colors, add different, you know, internationalize the prompts, you can do that all. I'm going to sign in as the basic connection burger administrator. And the way that this is set up, you'll see it is essentially menus down the left-hand side here. And what I tell everybody is start at setup and then work your way down. In setup, you connect LeoStream to all of your external systems, including your authentication servers and what we call centers. Um, setting up authentication servers is very simple. As I did mention, we support a lot of different types of authentication servers. The most common we see is Active Directory. And then in centers then, 
here's where I come in and say, well, I want to hook up to my scale, scale computing cluster. So it's a very simple process. I provide the IP address and then also username and password for a user who has permissions to execute the APIs that we use. And that's true. That setup is the same for any center that you want to connect to, whether it be AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform. We just need the credentials for a user who has the appropriate permissions. And you'll see here, you can have as many different center types as you want. If I wanted to add in Azure to the here, I would just come in here and select it and I'd be off and running. Now, as soon as I save my center, LeoStream reaches out to that hosting platform and inventories everything that you have already there. And that shows up down here in the resources section. Each of these pages is essentially a laundry list of everything that you're managing in the broker. So for example, here on the desktops page, I see all of the machines, the virtual machines that have come from my different centers. And then on the images page, I see all the different images that are available for me to do provisioning out of. The setup area then is also where I register gateways. So here, that gateway that I built in Amazon, I have registered it here with the connection broker. And that's all you need to do. And now the two are, are hooked up and ready to be used together. So in setup, hook me up to your external systems. And then configuration, here's where you start actually working through the different VDI workflows that you want to implement. The first part of that is building up a pool or multiple pools, depending on what you need to do. Now, pooling in LeoStream is very, very flexible. And really, it has a few purposes. For me, I always use it as an organizational means for me as a broker administrator. So as an example, here is everything that every virtual machine that is hosted in my scale computing cluster. Pools also, though, control provisioning. So I have nested inside of my pool of all machines on scale, a second pool, which is I'm using to manage provisioning of my desktops. So here in the pool definition, I've defined the pool as just everything that starts with a particular string. And then down here, oops, down here I get into defining how the broker is going to manage capacity inside of my scale environment. And this is true no matter what environment I'm looking at. So what you'll see here is there's actually a couple different ways to manage capacity using a Leo stream pool. One, I could, I could use static limits. I could just say, you know, this pool should have 10 machines at a minimum and maybe just only 10. But I've gotten a little trickier with this pool. And this is a good example for like a classroom application. What I've said is I want this pool to be empty nominally. So if no one's at work, I don't need desktops. But I'm going to enforce new limits at specific times of day. So here I've defined some certain time frames when I want to have a different number of machines. And you'll see this row that's in green. That's the current rule that's in effect because of the time of day it is. So I want to have two machines in there with a maximum of two. So what happens here, you know, these numbers here relate to this pool size information you see. So because this rule is in effect, I already have two machines available. As users start logging in and grabbing one of those two desktops, LeoStream will spin up new ones to make sure there are continue to be two available until I hit a limit of 10 machines in the pool in general. When this time frame ends at 4.30, we're going to go back down to a pool size of zero and it's just going to delete everything. So the provisioning limits here say when does the broker provision and then the provisioning parameters tell us how. And what these parameters look like vary depending on the hosting platform that you're provisioning into, because that defines the type of information we need. Uh, in scale computing, it's very straightforward. You tell us, give us a naming convention for the machines, and then tell us which master template you want to provision off of. There's also this flag for marking desktops as deletable. In LeoStream, you can model persistent machines, you can model non-persistent machines, and what I like to say is you can do everything in, the, in between as well. But if you do want to do non-persistent machines and have us remove the delete the machines when the user is done, then you need to flag it as deletable here. So pools are administrative grouping, they control your provisioning, and then ultimately they do indicate which desktops different groups of users have access to. Now, unlike some of the other brokers that are out there, those brokers tend to entitle users to specific pools. You notice there's nothing in the pool that entitles users. That's done later inside policies. 
But because desktops are offered out of the pool, I then have to tell the connection broker, how do I manage the user's session to desktops in particular pools? And that's done through what we call plans. The protocol plan very simply tells the connection broker, what display protocol do I want to use to connect? So here, what you'll notice is I'm going to, if somebody logs in through LeoStream Connect, I'm going to use RDP and pass that connection through the gateway for this protocol plan. But if they log in through a web browser, I'm actually going to use the HTML5 client also through that gateway. So you can change protocols that people use based on not, not only their location and what they're connecting to, but also the type of client device they're actually using. Power control and release plans, here's where you start to see the agent come into play. So for example, in the power control plan, you will you can uh, change the power state of the machine based again on these LeoStream agent events. So did the user disconnect? Have they gone out, logged out? Did they go idle? So for example, what you see in this plan is it's saying, well, when the desktop is released, let's shut down the operating system. Well, release is not an event that comes from the agent. So where does that release event come from? The release events come from your release plans. You are the one as the administrator who schedules when the release event occurs. And when it occurs, well, that is actually defined by LeoStream agent actions or events. Again, you see this form. Did the user disconnect? Had they gone logged out? Those are the LeoStream agent events. And so now if I read through the way this plan is set up, it says, well, if the user disconnects, don't release the machine back to the pool. Let the user continue using their assigned machine. Maybe they went to lunch, they want to come back. But now if they actually fully log out, in that case, I am releasing the machine back to the pool. Now, if this is a pool of you know, GPU enabled machines where all the data is stored off on a different server, maybe that's all you need to do. You release the machine to the pool so someone else can use it. But if you are modeling more of that non-persistent model, when the machine is released, well, that triggers this when desktop is released section of the plan. And here I'm saying, go ahead and delete that machine. And obviously then if I delete the machine, my pool thresholds change and it will trigger off provisioning. So you can kind of see how by nesting these different events together and because one triggers the next, you have a lot of flexibility in defining how long does the user have access to a particular resource once they're assigned to it. So we've defined pools and plans. It all comes together in what we call policies. And a policy is essentially just another set of rules that tells the connection broker how many machines do I want to offer the user from which pool. And then there's a lot of other options here that kind of help the connection broker hone in on a particular machine in the pool. And then ultimately, you assign your plans. Now, a policy in LeoStream can offer multiple desktops from a single pool. It can offer desktops from multiple pools if you want. I can just come down here and add additional pools to this policy. And that way I can do things like give users access to a Windows machine and a Linux machine, or maybe different versions of operating systems if they need that for say QA. Now we still don't have this policy assigned out to users. And before we do that, I wanna talk very quickly about locations because locations is a very unique LeoStream concept. And the idea with, le with a location is that it's essentially a group of clients, but it's a group of clients that you define. So it could be, in my case, it's anyone logging in from a web browser because I want to put those people through the HTML5 viewer. It could also be all devices on a certain subnet, maybe because you want to attach different printers based on different areas in your office. So you have all this different functionality in defining these locations. And they come into play when we come down here and finally talk about assignments. Here is where you finally get these policies and ultimately desktops assigned out to users. And it's done through your authentication servers. So essentially when I created authentication servers and setup, LeoStream automatically added rows here. And all I have to do is edit this and I see what I call the grand LeoStream equation. So here is where I say, based on who the user is, and by default we use AD member of, but you can use whatever attribute you'd like. But based on who they are and where they come in from, they get a role in a policy. That policy obviously gives them access to different pools. The role, it's really handiest for providing role-based access to this interface that we've been stepping through. So if you have desktop administrators that 
should only see the desktops page and only be able to power control machines, maybe release assignments. You can use the role to limit access to just that particular functionality. They're very powerful. So once you get all of that configured, you, know, you work your way down the wizard, now what you want to do before users start logging in is actually test it out, get out any kinks. Well, you can use that, do that using this handy little test login functionality. And this, you don't need to have users logging into the broker yet to do this. So if I just test my own login, now I see the logic that the broker goes through. So what it finds me in the authentication server, finds my attributes, and then what you'll notice, it starts stepping through the assignments table and it looks for the first rule or row in that assignments table that I match and that defines my role and my policy. It then shows the policy logic and ultimately the desktop that I'll be offered. To, offered. If you wanna see that from an end user's perspective, well here it's the same web browser URL but now I'm logging in using my credentials. So I'll sign in, and again, this is customizable, so you can change the colors and what you see on here based on what your users need to see. And now when I connect, this will connect me using our HTML5 viewer, so it actually launches directly in the browser here. What you see as an administrator as all that's going on over here on the system log page, is essentially a running tally of everything that's going on in your system. Here's where I mentioned that audit level tracking. So I can see when I logged in, I can see what the user was offered when they connected. And then I see the Leo stream agent notifications that, that happened there. If you want to see from, sorry, from a Leo stream connect perspective, there it is. Again, that's just a login portal. And in this case, what it's ultimately doing is logging in via RDP, connecting to that machine in the background. And again, let me just move that out of the way so you can see. In that case, it requested the connection and that connection was to that pool that had those provisioning limits set. So as soon as Bill log was assigned to that machine, it triggered the provisioning limit and now a new machine is spinning up over here. You can see it starting there in my scale environment automatically. So I wanna thank you all for coming. And if you do have any further questions, um, you've got a, the phone number and you can email sales. They can direct you to me or they will direct you to someone else who can get you the answer. We do have just high level data sheets and product detail sheets and all sorts of other case studies and white papers on our website. So you're free to go there and download whatever is of interest to you. Again, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.